Daryl Gibbs was a young soldier during the Battle of Okinawa. One night, Gibbs and a friend, Sergeant Frank Dow, were taking turns taking wash outside their foxhole in a place U.S. soldiers called Big Apple Slope. Then came a Japanese soldier who engaged in a struggle and consequently was killed by Dow. Gibbs had been awoken during the fight. When my dad, my, my dad got up, uh, was scrambling out of that foxhole to help, mm -hmm. and, uh, and by that time, everything was pretty much finishing, you know what I mean? That soldier uh, lay dead there, and my dad noticed his revolver was laying on the ground, and the revolver wasn't something you walked away from because it was just handy to have a sidearm when, when they were in the circumstances that they were. And when he picked up the revolver, the, the wallet was laying there as well. Daryl Gibbs kept the fallen Japanese soldier's wallet for more than 60 years. Lee Gibbs would sometimes look through it as a child and wonder about the people and the photos inside. Then 10 years ago, his brother, Wes Gibbs, had the idea to get the writing on the photos translated by a former Japanese exchange student. He sent pictures of all of that to that exchange student, and that's when the doors really started opening up. He was able to translate the name. And the wallet was determined to have belonged to Sergeant Keijiro Hojo, shown here in the center, along with a photo of his brother, who also died in the war, and another man. Uh, he had some pictures in there that belonged to uh, a soldier that was from Okinawa. That man was identified as Masaichi Kikiyama by Shinobu Chinen, Kikiyama's daughter. After she saw the photos printed in a local newspaper, Wes Gibson and his father had gone all the way to Okinawa to give the wallet to the Ryukyu American Historical Research Society, which helps with return items to Okinawa. The media was there, and Shinobu Chinen recognized her father in this picture taken of all the items removed from the wallet. Durrell and his son met with Chinen to return the picture. Her father hadn't died in the war and had come back home. Here are the young and old photos shown side by side. The research society was also intrigued by another item found in the wallet. Within that wallet, there was a little tiny envelope, and that envelope was sealed. Inside the envelope were locks of hair and fingernail clippings that were traditionally kept by Japanese soldiers, so at least a part of them could be returned home in battle, as many of their bodies would not. This was an amazing find for the research society. When, when that the little envelope appeared. Everybody had heard about him. The Historical Society people knew uh, what um, that they existed. Nobody had ever seen one. And then when this when this little envelope appeared, and it had in it the locks of hair and the fingernail clippings, uh, all of a sudden everything it, it just that's that's when the news media picked up on it. This time, Lee and his sister, Clara Jean, decided to join their brother and father to return the wallet and envelope to Hojo's daughter, who also saw the photos in her local media. A Japanese public television network was waiting for them at the airport to document the event. I guess that what made it acceptable was the fact we knew the purpose that that was being filmed. We knew that it was going to be aired as, as part of their, uh, their uh, memorial uh, celebrations for the end of the war. And we knew that, that uh, our being able to return that wallet to his daughter was, was not only going to create a lot of healing for her, but it would be able to uh, be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, symbolic uh, of a healing for everyone, for a lot of people there. And uh, it, for us, it was kind of the uh, last effort to, to bring peace to a country that had been really devastated as far as Okinawa was concerned. Yeah. Well, this, we were set to go April for, uh, at the first part of April, and they, they had gotten there found, and, and, and we, we were all set to go. And then the tsunami hit. And and their town was damaged, their town was damaged by the tsunami. I mean, all of this was happening up there in the big earthquake. And we didn't know if she was, uh, that, was the, that was the anxiety there for a while. We didn't know if she was alive or dead. But on May 27th, they did meet with Noriko Kukuchi, Hojo's daughter, in Morioka in the Iwate Prefecture. There, they were cordially greeted and brought into a small room inside. We're, uh, and, and that room is filled with ourselves, our translator, and 
and uh, the television uh, camera crew and, and uh, a, a gentleman who was producing a, uh, a film documentary for the U.S. and, and just a number of, of people that crowded into this little tiny room. And we made the presentation uh, as a family to her. Uh, and, and, and for her, that was important, the fact that we as a family as a whole, because my brother and my sister and myself, uh, the remaining members of my dad's family, went with him to do this, to support him in this. And uh, share with her uh, kind of the events that had taken place that... Um, she never had a chance to know her father. She was less than three years old at the time he was killed in the war. Uh, she asked my dad if she had seen, if he had seen her father alive, and he told her yes. And uh, and then she asked him when uh, he picked up the uh, was able to come in possession of the wallet, and he told her it was at the break of. Uh, daylight at break of dawn when he noticed uh, that wallet there as he picked up the revolver. And uh, and she asked where her father was killed and he said on the, at the edge of our foxhole. And uh, and she said suddenly you can see the wheels start to churn and she says you mean this was either kill or be killed? And my dad said unfortunately that's the way war is. What was important uh, it, and it, it, there was a lot of significance to it. For them, what was important was basically the return of this, uh, these few small token of his remains to that family, and just the uh, healing process that comes with that. And we were then invited to uh, go and participate with her uh, to invite the spirit of her father back to their family shrine. That, that had been their family shrine for 350 some odd years and uh, uh, we, we went to the Buddhist temple and, and participated as they were burning the incense and those moments of reverence that was that meant intended to bring his spirit home. Lee Gibbs said doing the trip over Memorial Day added to the importance of the occasion, making it one of the most meaningful Memorial Days of his life. I mean, we, we go to City Park and we participate in all Memorial Day services. We take our grandkids. There to, to participate and honor those veterans, but to have an opportunity to be there and experience firsthand uh, really makes a difference.